What the heck? Today we're going to do a quick, cheap, easy mod that'll allow you to print flexibles and abrases on your AMS light. But not like four at a time. It'll like allow you to print from your AMS light using those materials. I'll explain, you'll get it. So once again, Corey and I met up this past week. We planned a video, filmed some good stuff. We really coordinated to make sure we would have something that was thought out and intentional for you this week. I quickly abandoned it and wanted to do a follow-up on the AMS dryer video. So that's how that went. But I need to do more testing for that one. So I'm gonna abandon that too. So here we are at the last minute once again. I'm gonna explore an idea that came to me while I was preparing for the AMS follow-up video, and we'll just see where it takes us. I just showered so my hair's still wet, but in the next scene my hair is gonna be more dry because it was filmed after these scenes. Because continuity. Right now it's Saturday, and this needs to come out tomorrow, which is Sunday. So there I was, printing this beautiful Polymaker Orange TPU that you can get from the link in our description. I was doing this for the follow-up video for the AMS dryer, which I think is gonna come out next week now because I ran out of time this week. But this is when the idea struck me. You see, when you're printing TPU on the A1 Mini, you actually can't use the AMS light. It's a wet noodle going through a tube, and the AMS light has a motor that would be pushing on that wet noodle, trying to drive it through like a foot of tube. It probably doesn't work super well, so in order to print TPU on your A1 Mini, you actually have to put it on the supplied spool holder on the back, or on a spool roller on the side. This isn't a problem. Unless you're a procrastinator like me that jumps around from idea to idea to idea until you don't have any time. And even beyond that, this idea isn't really a time saver <laughs> at all. It's just a convenience thing. So here's the idea, and once again, I got this idea from the Python mod on the big AMS that I was watching on Modbot's channel. That allowed for the use of a pass-through. It allows you to feed the filament into the feeder motor like normal, or you can choose to pass through straight to the machine, bypassing the motor altogether. Right, other than TPU, why would you use a pass through though? On the standard AMS, you're not actually meant to print abrasives. The teeth on the feeder motors, the wheels that contact the filament and push it through, they're not made for that level of abrasion. And I'm not just talking about your carbon fiber PET or CFPLA. I'm talking about your glow-in-the-dark PLAs, too. Those are abrasive, and they'll chew your machine up, dude. You like that? You don't like that. All right, no flexibles, no abrasives on the AMS. I guess I can submit to that. But I don't want to reach all around the back of my machine, put my TPU on the spool, snake it through into the Bowden tube, avoid my AMS, reach all around my setup. It doesn't sound like much, but that's a bother to me. The AMS light is a great way to hold and dispense filaments. And I like using it, so I would like to continue to use it. So I set off to make a mod that would allow you to load the AMS light like you normally would, using the spindle system, move one Bowden tube into a new fitting, and use a pass-through. All right, first things first, measurements. I wanted to locate this in the center on this little cylindrical circle deal here. This would allow either of the tubes to reach it pretty easily without really changing the path or direction of the filament. That would work. With that nailed down, there was something else to address. The spokes on the AMS are sprung spindles. These things are sprung because it helps keep the spool tight. When the AMS does color changes, it feeds a long portion of filament back onto the spool and this helps it wind on neatly. This is an excellent idea, and it's really well thought out on Bamboo's part, but for what we're doing, it's not super great. There's no motor on the AMS that's gonna help overcome the tension of that spring. Using the pass-through only allows for the motor on the tool head that's feeding the filament to overcome the drag of that spring, as well as any drag of a foot of Bowden tube. My solution, mount that sucker backwards. Instead of fighting the spring, in some cases, the motor is going to assist in feeding the filament. We're not going to have any unspooling issues because we're not doing multicolor, so it's not going to try and do color changes and feed filament backwards. 
I decided to start with a rectangle and begin with the feature that was going to mount this onto that cylindrical block and build from there. I made a circle that would go over that cylinder based on the measurements that I got, and I extruded it. That way I could move on to the other feature, which would be the clips. These clips were important because it was what was going to keep everything tight against the frame of the AMS. I knew this was going to take some revision, but we gave it a shot. These weren't exactly easy areas to measure, so I got as close as I could and then figured I would iterate to get everything fine-tuned. After the clips were modeled, I moved on to the hub where I was going to be feeding the filament in. I needed to choose some fittings for this part, so that's what we moved on to next. I looked through my bin of spare fittings and decided on which ones I was going to use. I wanted four of the same ones because initially I was going to do a pass through for each of the four tubes. When I thought about it, I really only needed one, I guess, but for the sake of symmetry in this model, I decided I'd do two. With the fitting selected, I gave it a quick crude measurement and transferred that onto my model. I usually use like a 0 0.03 inch tolerance or, or difference when I measure for precise pieces to make sure I'm accounting for expansion or over extrusion. But in this case I decided I wasn't going to add that extra tolerance because this fitting was going to be cutting its own threads as it was installed. So I decided to err on the side of keeping her nice and tight. Finally I added some fillets and I made a nice smooth radius on the other side. This was in hopes that the Bowden tube coming out from the fitting wasn't going to have any chafing or wiggling issues. I pushed print and I came out with a reasonable result first try. Uh, the clips broke, but I figured that might happen because they're a pretty thin feature and would be fragile because they're in the plane of the layer lines. So we press on. For the sake of continued accuracy in my measurements, I decided to refine and then print and then refine and then print and refine and print. I beefed up the clips and I sent what I thought would be my final print to the printer to see if I was successful. Now this one, that was about 98% of the way there. Had a little bit of movement though, so I decided one more print. My final revision pulled the ends of the clips in just a little bit, and I think that is what did the trick. The model fits nice, it sits well, it doesn't wobble really, and it looks okay, even though it's just a rectangle. Now that we've come this far, let's see if these fittings will actually fit inside of these holes that I modeled. I used teardrop shape holes to allow for better printability. If you just use circular holes, you're often going to get some sagging at the top of the hole when you do the overhangs, so that's going to create an oval instead, and that would make this hole a little bit too tight for my fitting to screw into. I'm not going to make the joke. Having the teardrop shape also helped when I was installing the fitting because you didn't have a fully 360 degree constrained thing trying to get screwed in. So you're evacuating material while you're cutting the threads and you're not having as much drag when you're cutting the threads. There needs to be a reasonable amount of pressure applied as you start screwing the fitting in, but once it does get started cutting its own threads, it does pretty well centering itself up. With that test fit finished, the Project 2 was finished. I went ahead and installed all of the fittings for all of the pass-throughs that I made for all three of my machines. What the heck? So there you have it. A simple, cheap, easy print that makes the workflow just a little bit easier. I'll be putting this model up on Thangs, so I'll make sure that link's in the description, but um, what else do you want to see me do here? Have you heard about anybody doing something similar to this? What other mods have you used for your AMS Lite? I know the AMS has a lot of support for mods, but I don't know about the AMS Lite as much. Let me know in the comments! Also, if you want to support the channel by spending some money with the merchants that support us, check the links in the description. When you buy something from Polymaker, for example, we get a cut of that, and that helps us continue to make videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.